In the last film, I discussed how paying attention to the ball game allows a performer to encounter the mechanics of herself and through that encounter to make decisions about how she wishes to develop and alter her use of self. This process is based on the performer learning to pay appropriate attention to her work and her interaction via the ball with others. One of the key areas of learning that the ball game offers is the development of this idea of appropriateness. Appropriate is a strange word in that it can suggest a form of restraint or withholding. That is not how I use it. When I use the word appropriate, I mean any response to an impulse that properly serves the continuation of the exercise. Sometimes the appropriate response is subtle and understated, sometimes wild and enormously energetic. However, if a performer is to learn how to sustain a performance, always serving its continuation and always keeping it live, she needs to rehearse appropriateness. The ball game offers her the opportunity to do this, for in addition to being a domain to develop the mechanics of the self, it is also a domain of metaphor and psychic modelling. That the ball game can serve this function is not surprising. Its fundamental structure comprises the passing of moments of communication from one person to another, moments of communication which the receiver has to manipulate and pass on to someone else. As such, this is a model for all performance situations. A performer receives and transmits elements of communication. It is performance stripped of content, aesthetic and emotional association. The ball game is pure performance. It provides a clear domain in which performers can explore ways of interacting appropriately, of responding and shaping different forms of impulse without being distracted by the content of their communication. An example. I encourage performers not to help one another in the ball game. This may seem a strange thing to suggest, especially as the training is designed to develop ensemble and the performers who choose to work in ensemble contexts are often highly empathetic, generous and naturally helpful. However, to help another to do an exercise is not an appropriate response. Being helpful deprives the other person of the chance to have full engagement with the complexity of the exercise. If I don't throw a ball to someone because I see that she's already dealing with another ball, then I deprive her of the chance to deal with two impulses at once. I withhold from her a full experience of the exercise. Though I might be trying to be helpful, I am in fact being patronising, as I'm working from the assumption that the person I'm trying to help will not be able to deal with a challenging and complex set of requirements. Of course, there is a chance that she will not be able to deal with those requirements. She will perhaps drop one or both of the balls. However, there's no problem with her dropping the balls. Dropping is always fine. She will, at least, have had the chance to experience what dealing with two balls at once entails. She will encounter the need to respond simultaneously to two distinct impulses. Eventually, she will learn to deal with two, three four balls simultaneously. While this might make sense intellectually, it's not easy to break the habits of empathetic and generous helpfulness. It feels wrong to throw a ball at someone who is struggling to deal with something else. It feels rude, confrontational, insulting. Yet at least it's only a ball that's being thrown. How much harder it is to take the risk of overloading someone if the communication that is being offered them is content rich, if it is emotionally loaded or potentially painful to the receiver. Thus, in the ball game, the performer can model the thinking necessary to stop being helpful without having to engage in potentially painful communications with a fellow performer. The flip side to being helpful is being careless. Often when an individual is overloaded, too many balls to deal with simultaneously, she fails to pay appropriate attention to how she passes each ball on. She passes her panic through the throw to someone else. She throws too hard. 
inaccurately or with a throw that does not reach its destination. Any of these responses impedes the flow of the exercise and makes life unnecessarily harder for other participants. Thus, in developing appropriateness, the performer is asked, however busy or calm she is at any given moment, to neither help nor impede. She is asked to respond appropriately. In other words, to do only but exactly what the exercise requires of her in each unfolding moment. In this way, the ball game, serving as a metaphor for all performance, allows each performer within it to model and embed appropriate ways of communicating within the ensemble. Knowing exactly what the range of appropriate responses at each moment is requires the performer really to understand her task. This requires specific attention to each moment. As every task can be broken into smaller elements, and as the exercise usually requires each performer to work with more than one ball and more than one action at once, so this opens up the idea of the hierarchy of tasks, another core metaphor for all performance. The notion of the hierarchy of tasks acknowledges that at every moment there are essential responses, optional responses, and unnecessary responses. The performer must do the necessary, can do the optional, and should not do the unnecessary. She should learn instantaneously to differentiate between them. The ball game, especially when additional choreographies are added into the core exercise, permits the performer to rehearse this process of instant, appropriate decision-making. For example, if the performer is asked to jump, spin, then touch the floor after each throw, but as she lets one ball leave her hand, she sees another approaching, she needs to decide immediately whether to complete the choreography and allow the next ball to drop, or to forget the choreography and concentrate on dealing with the next impulse. As I stress that keeping the balls flowing is the primary task, and as such occupies the top level of the hierarchy of tasks, the most appropriate response is to do the necessary, catch and throw, and only do the optional, jump, spin, touch the floor, if there is time. The hierarchy of tasks, as a metaphor for all performance, also emphasises that some actions, such as chatting to one's neighbour or thinking about something that happened outside the studio, are not within the hierarchy of tasks and should not take up any of a performer's attention. The ball game works as a domain where certain thinking disciplines can be rehearsed in safe, content-free ways. It allows a performer to rehearse being live in an unfolding performance situation. The game also offers itself as a specific metaphor for many different performance situations. It's very common when I work with performers beyond this training, turning this work into rehearsal and performance, for those performers to have insight into what a given scene or action requires of them by realising, ah yes, now that's exactly like it is in the ball game. <laughs>